thanks to Bank and Nexi and other guests that I have the opportunities to share something uh, on this topic. And this year marks the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. And I think over the past century, the party has uh, united and led the people in the battle against the poverty. Uh, as, uh, and China is one of the largest countries in the world with a population of 1.4 billion. And due to the historical background and uneven development and also other problems, that I think it was a very, very difficult task to alleviate the poverty in China. But in 1978, there was a new chapter, this uh, reform and opening up policy. And that's what we call socialist modernization in China and the rapid social economic development speed up the poverty alleviation and also resulted in a sharp decline in the number of poor population. And in 2011, uh, the central government also set a clear target on the battle against the poverty uh, to ensure that the moderate uh, prosperities would be achieved by 2020. And at the end of the 2020, China achieved another goal is to eliminate all the extreme poverty. So according to some international statistics, uh, for example, the World Bank's international poverty line, the number of Chinese people lived out of the poverty over the past 40 years since the opening up policy accounts for more than 70% of the world's total. So as you can see, China made a great contribution on the global poverty reduction. And these contributions were also recognized by the United Nations. And when we look back in Hong Kong, although Hong Kong is an international financial center, but our wealth disparity problem is very serious. And the Hong Kong government only believed in the policy of laser fares. They do not interfere the market so much and just like the small government and big market. And their concept is only to develop the economy so that the workers can share something. But the Hong Kong Gini coefficient is very high, which means that this concept is wrong. And, and also apart from developing the economy, we also need more labor policy or resources allocation policy. So our glass wood worker can share the fruits of uh, economic development. And also uh, last year, uh, uh, last year, the, the director of liaison office of the central government in Hong Kong, uh, he visited the, the poor family and the residents in the subdivided flats and the elderly in the community. And I think this, this was a, a, a political symbol and the significance is very strong that Hong Kong have many deep seat problems on people's livelihood, uh, for example, the housing problem. And I think the central government understand these issues and so that I think the Hong Kong government should do something on that. And another issue is that I want to share something on the one country, two system and the situation of the union in Hong Kong. Um, now the, the official slogan is to celebrating the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party in China and also the 24th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to motherland. This we call one country, two system. And I remember that Mr. Deng Xiaoping said that we adopt the one country, two system approach to solve the Hong Kong problem. And is 
and it is completely based on the reality and fully takes uh, the account, takes into account the history, the actual situation and the reality of the Hong Kong. And now we face a new situation in Hong Kong because we have national security law. And I think the purpose of the legislation is to prevent the action of, uh, for example, the C-section, subversion of state power, and advocating Hong Kong independence, or uh, some people communicate with, uh, connect with foreign external force to endanger the national security. I think it only targets on extremely uh, small minority. I think the basic rights and freedom enjoyed by the citizen will be protected. And there's nothing for Hong Kong citizens to worry about in exercising their rights uh, under the basic law. Uh, for example, uh, from the angle of the trade union in Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong people can organize trade union and also can continue to participate in the uni union activity. And, also, some of our trade union in Hong Kong is also the affiliate members of some international trade union organization. They can discuss many labor issues like in the past. And also the uh, International Labor Convention, which recognized by the Hong Kong government will still be effective. So I think the union rights in Hong Kong are protected by the basic law. So that's uh, what I want to share with uh, other guests. Thank you. Thanks.